So in this video, I want to talk about dongle decks and specifically Q style. And I have the M15i and the M12i. I did a review on the 15i and I absolutely love this thing. But something interesting happened when I bought the M12i. Because it was on such a good markdown, I went ahead and picked it up because I paid 200 for this one about a year ago. And I just bought this one about a month ago. They both are, you know, on the higher end kind of dongle with the ESS DAC and Q-Style's priority of amperage over voltage amplification really makes them unique. But what I noticed was there was quite a bit of difference between these two. But before I talk about that, you guys can see the sizes here. They're very similar. I actually like the way this one looks because it's darkened out here on the corners. This one's very exposed to what's inside, which also looks pretty good. The 15i has the double 4.4 and the 3.5. The M12 only has the 3.5 port there. Yeah, they're pretty similar. Just the M12 is quite a bit smaller and lighter. The 15 does have the high end standard gain selection, which could be quite helpful. I usually listen on high gain, no matter what I'm listening to. It feels like it gives it more volume, as in like more presence and especially vocals. Other than that, they come with the same cables, same length, same style, same everything. And also, I know there have been some trouble with people having connection losses. What I did to the 15 here is I just glued it with a removable glue. It's like you can just peel it off. It's like a rubbery kind of glue. I think it's called either Goop or E6000 or something like that. But yeah, it works very well. I haven't done it to this one yet. It is lighter, so it doesn't have as much stress as this one. But I'm going to do it too to keep the connections long term nice and healthy. But yeah, so back to the sound. Basically, the M12i blew me away with how much more warm it is and the vocal presence without losing practically any of the detail that the M15i has. So the M15i is extremely detailed, very nuanced, kind of. Very good at picking out parts from the music. But compared to the 12, it feels cold. It sounds cold. It feels very kind of analytically cold. And I think that's the best way I can explain it. So it is interesting to listen to, but after listening to the 12, I cannot listen to this much anymore. I just pull it out once in a while just to compare between the two, and I always go back to this one. That doesn't mean that this thing ain't good for something. This thing really delivers on the higher up range of headphones, and actually was much better for darker headphones too. And IEMs, like I have these here. These are the QKZ, I think, HBB which are beautiful little IAMs and they sound very nice and they're quite dark. They have not much trouble extension, but with the 4.4 and this dongle here together, they actually sound great. And I do have an upgraded cable too, not the one that came with. So yeah, just a little bit of upgrades here. These IAMs are very cheap. They're like $20 or less. They're one of the best for the money if you like vocals and lower end kind of sound. This dongle does surprisingly well with these, which is very counterintuitive as this is very expensive compared to this. And they work great together. I do have these other IAMs here, which are the RD T10 Pro, and these are planner magnetics. And these sound really analytical, as you can imagine, they're planners. But they're also pretty soft overall. But at the same time, they're kind of lifeless in a way, I guess, or more digital sounding. I don't even know how to explain it. They're not as wide, or not wide as in like stage, or just, just the overall sound is more narrow. Or I guess it would be better to say it's like more cold. It's just more cold. And believe it or not, guys, this DAC here, the M15i with these is is so analytical it's insane because they're planners but because this is cold and these are kind of cold it really kind of has a more cold sound and only kind of tailors to very specific music maybe like more electronic music things like that maybe so the t10s are cold and they don't match too well with this but with this they sound a lot more better as in like they open up to the vocals a little more so again the 12 here really shows that you don't need expensive to sound great and with planners you don't lose much of the detail as they really really put out the details and these are great iams if you want something you know mid-budget around 100 bucks or so these are pretty awesome now the next part might be a little controversial but i do have a bunch of other headphones like over the year, Hi-Fi Men's and Sennheiser, things like that, which are not with me at the moment as I am on the go. But I do have my Apple AirPod Max here. And, you know, these are good for just the convenience with the Apple ecosystem that I use on my laptop and things. But what's interesting is I got this cable because these second version Apples with the lightning port here, you can get this very expensive cable, which is like 40 bucks and plug it in here. 
and then plug the other end, which is a 3.5, into any of the dongles. I use this one here, and the sound is incredible, guys. Apple already sounds pretty decent, you know, if you like that kind of signature, but it takes it to a new level with this thing, and I don't know why or how, but it's very noticeable. It gets rid of the boomy bass that these things naturally have, and just levels it all out, and I think it has something to do with this wire that's just neutral. And then on top of that, I do have these silicone little covers over the pads, which even enhance it even more to kill the boomy bass and just become very flat. So if you have some Maxes, try these little silicone covers. It comes in a kit. There's a cover here. You get one here and the, over the things. You'll see that the sound really changes. And if you get this USB-C and you use a dongle, I don't know. I've listened to a lot of stuff. I'm pretty impressed. These things actually punch super high then compared to, you know, what they're meant for a more consumer, not audiophile style. And this dongle here just makes the sound incredible in the Maxes here. So... Yeah, overall, I've been mostly listening to this, kind of staying away from this. I don't know if it's just a period of time. I might go back to it, but I tried a few times and I keep wanting to go back to the other one. You know, if I go straight from here to here, I notice right away and I don't want to stay. Maybe if I start with these, I'd be more okay. But then if I listen to this and then go back to this, I don't want to go back the other way. So yeah, if you want to save yourself some money, I would probably say don't buy this unless you need the power with the 4.4. If you got, you know, big planners, like the hyphen mints, Arias, Anandas, whatever. This probably would do better, but don't discount this thing. If it's at a lower price like I got mine, I wouldn't even hesitate, guys. I'd just pick it up and try it out. Not only is it more convenient because it's small, but it actually sounds better to me overall with the testing here that I've done and listening. And if you like more warm vocal sounds, that are also still precise and analytical. This thing really does the trick here. And I guess this video is basically just saying, don't miss out on M12 if you don't have one. This is what it comes in, it's a little box. It sits right in here. There's also an adapter. And then the cable goes here. This is a great bang for your buck at 50 bucks. And I don't know if anything else could really compete at that price. And I've been enjoying it a lot. And it is quite powerful. It could go all the way to 768 on PCM. What I think up to 32 bit. So yeah, great DAC, great value. So if you don't have one yet, make sure you pick one up. Yeah, that'll be all for this video. Links in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.